How are you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit from Monday over here at the Atlantic? We have a few things to talk about. First of all, Jose is gone, as we knew he would be this morning. There are some thunderstorms left behind over here in the vicinity of Bermuda, but he is completely gone and dead, lived for only a few hours, and he is now gone. And uh, we're going to be watching something over here in the Gulf of Mexico that isn't very apparent right now, but the models are starting to pick up on the possibility for mischief. You notice that we have this old frontal boundary from where Irene moved northward, and it's it may not even really be a front, but it is a boundary that extends down here all the way into the Gulf, and there's a little bit of mid-level vorticity in this area due to a cut off portion of the tail of this trough. You can kind of see how the clouds are moving this way here and this way here. There's a trough, a trailing trough over the eastern seaboard, a weakness from where Irene moved north, and there's a little bit of it in the tail that got cut off down here. And that's going to be amplifying a little bit over the next few days according to the models. And you see all this gunk down here? bunch of thunderstorm activity. This is going to be interacting with this area of mid-level vorticity and we could see this try to form some area of surface low pressure as this meanders around in here and tries to move, guess what, northwest towards Texas and this is the kind of thing that could bring Texas some rain which is going to be very nice for these folks if this actually pans out and this is going to be something that we're going to have to watch between the three and ten day period this is going to be around a while because this is the kind of situation where you can see the Texas Ridge wants to build in strong here but what happens is these transient troughs that bring features like Irene northward they come through they break down the Texas Ridge for a while and then they slide east and lift out so when when the ridge breaks down temporarily, this kind of a feature will try to move northwest, but then the ridge builds in strongly again, can get it stuck inland, and then the models have it being forced back south due to the ridge being strong up there. So this is something we may have to watch during the 3 to 10 day period, which means exactly the first week of September is where I think we should watch this. And I cut, I cut it off at day 10, because if we have something like this getting up in here by this time, then it's going to be hard to get anything developing right off to its west. So we're going to have to cut that off at day 10. But this could be meandering around for quite a while, lighting up the Gulf of Mexico with some precipitation, possibly moving northwest into Texas. We're going to get some relief to you guys, hopefully during this first week of September, which will be very nice. I'm sure many will be glad to hear that. And we can see that at day seven on the European ensembles, we have member variants just off the Texas coast here, showing that some of the members are indicating the possibility for low pressure to, de to be developing in here. Whether it's a homegrown tropical cyclone or not, we don't know. We'll have to monitor the situation, but we are going to have possibly low pressure and some precip precipitation being generated here, whether or not we get a tropical storm from this. Now, the next feature that we're going to watch very closely is just now coming under the GOES satellite here, Tropical Depression 12. It got named, and we can see it on the close-up visible satellite here. Basically, our floater here is a very well-defined center of circulation sitting off of here just east of the convection to the, to the west of the center, and this is starting to move off to the west-northwest, and this is going to be the next feature to be concerned about. The bad news here is that there is some dry air getting entrained into the northern part of the system, and I say that's bad news because if anything keeps this weak for any amount of time, it helps it come farther west down the road, and that is not something that we're going to want with the system. This may be our first true Cape Verde type development, develops before getting clear of the Cape Verde longitude, and then develops westward and becomes becomes a hurricane pretty fast. These are the model runs on 12L right now. Moving off this way, west-northwest. Now, right off the bat, the, these are going to be too far north. This is the way this has been all season long so far, and the way most seasons go with these Cape Verde systems, these models are going to be too far north here initially. So let's start the betting right now, folks. Right now, the TVCN model consensus has this at 2258 and I think it's going to be at 2062 in six days. That's where I think it's going to be. That's where the model consensus is. This is where I am for day six. And you can see that it's pretty close to the northern Antilles where I have it. So the folks in here, 
you know, you you may have to watch this down the road right now. Not really a concern. The the high pressure right now over the Atlantic is way up here. You can't even see it fully on the satellite right now because it's way centered up here, which means that this does have room to gain latitude. And this is going to be moving west northwest with a northerly component to it for the next week or so. And this may very easily avoid the Caribbean islands here, but it's too close for comfort. It's way down here at 10 north right now, way south of the Cape Verde Islands, which means it's, if, it's, if its source region is way down here, folks in here need to watch it very carefully, but right now not too much of a concern while it's a week out. We will just have to keep an eye on it. So I think it's coming farther south than the models right off the bat here, and you can see that the European model, the operational has it way up here at day 10. That's where the European run from last night had it. But look at where all the ensemble means are, all this variance showing that the ensemble mean actually disagrees with the operational run and has it much farther south towards the Caribbean islands and the Bahamas, perhaps being more of a threat to land as we move on in the time period here. So already the ensembles are starting to breach loyalty with the operational runs on some of these. And we can see that the GFS operational at day 8 here has the storm as a hurricane up northeast of the Antilles. And then look at this trough over the eastern United States. This is a monster trough, and chances are this trough is not going to look like this in eight days. The reason being that the pattern does not favor a trough this strong cutting off the Atlantic Ridge over here. And the reason for that is because if we go over to the GFS ensembles, again, they're breaking faith with the operational runs. Look at what, what we have going here. Just like with Irene, I talked about this pattern. Look at all the troughing over Alaska and the Gulf of Alaska. And I know this is real great attention for me here where I live, but look at all this troughing. Really cold for me, actually. Winter's starting early here. But all this troughing forces the jet to want to be flat across southern Canada. All this troughing wants to pump the heights over southern Canada. And so this kind of a trough in here, look how much weaker it is on the, on the ensembles than it is on the operational. This is one heck of a trough down here. 582 ISO hips is all the way down into Georgia. And we go out here and it's up in North Carolina, a bit farther north, and the trough is a lot more flat looking because the jet stream wants to be flat in here. We want high heights in here with this pattern with a stronger Atlantic ridge, which means that the storm is going to try to come in farther west. And if we go out to day 11, you can see that look at all the heights building over southern Canada and the northern US as troughing continues in the Gulf of Alaska. And then if we move over to this screen, Look at all these closed red lines. These are the ensembles showing where the storm would be anywhere from Cape Cod down into the northern Caribbean in here. All of these red circles are possible ensemble locations for what would be Hurricane Cadia if she was in here. So you can see that the ensembles are a lot farther west than where the operational has it, which recurves it out east of Bermuda here. So there is concern that this pattern could still try to bring this west. Now chances are if it develops very fast and actually is a hurricane over here north of the, northeast of the Antilles, it's going to be pretty hard to get it into the coast here. And we're going to have to have this come southwest of 20 north and 60 west if it's going to be a significant threat to land. There are going to be a couple of transient troughs like this one that move through the pattern progressively and are going to try to pick this up and recurve it, possibly a concern for Bermuda. But this pattern, you can see what happens here. Look at all the ridging. This is the classic signature of things that bring storms to the coast. You can see that the Atlantic Ridge is here, the Four Corners region ridge is here. Look at the break in between right over the eastern, southeastern United States. This is not a pattern you want to see with the ridging over the top in here. Absolutely classic for United States landfalls. And we talked about this being a problem during the peak months of the season, August and September. And we're now moving towards September. September 10th is the peak of the season. This could be an issue. The other, the other thing is that if we have this mischief going on in the western Gulf of Mexico through day 10, by day 8 here you can see this. This is actually a ridge, what this closed isohips here is. If this ridge was actually here, this would leave period, because it's not going to move towards this ridge here. But if this trough is far enough north, and we have enough mischief going on in the Gulf of Mexico, heights would lower in here, and this ridge would disappear. And then we'd have low heights in here, a cutoff trough split, trying to pull and tug this westward at the same time as this trough is leaving. And then we could have a situation where this gets tugged right towards the southeast United States in 10 to 15 days. But we will have to watch this very, very far out here. There are a lot of possibilities for it, as there always 
always are. There just always are so many possibilities for these systems so far out, and I'm illustrating those possibilities for you. Chances are if it develops very fast into a hurricane and continues moving west-northwest, it will have a hard time reaching the coast. But if there's any delay in its development, and if the models are too far north like I think they are, and it ends up in here, then it has a shot to get towards the coast down the road if these troughs lift out and the timing is right, and then you get a pattern like this over top of a hurricane sitting in the southwest Atlantic. Not a great pattern, so we will be watching carefully for this storm as she comes across. will likely be named Cadia very fast here. She moves west-northwest, likely to be a hurricane, perhaps another major hurricane like Irene down the road. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.